Now, how do we make that your reality? How do we get you on the right track to going down that path? I want to do a session now where we teach you the, the basics. It's funny, I'm at the reception last night and a lady comes up to me and um, she's telling me she's been doing this for like three weeks and she's really, really confused. She's getting like 40 emails per day. She doesn't know, you know what to do, what not to do where to turn, and it's just very confusing. This business is actually quite simple. We overcomplicate it, though. Okay, We get that much information thrown at us that we can't recognize what's important and what's not. But it's actually quite simple. There's a few fundamental things that you need to do to get results. And if you do them, you will get results. Okay, Very first thing, it all starts inside of your head. Who here, you guys are getting into internet marketing, but who here is currently working in a job? Okay, who, all right, so quite a, quite a few of you. Who here is like full-time in, in your business? All right, so it's roughly like 70% of, of you are in jobs and 30% of you are pretty much full-time. After seeing thousands of people come through our training, one of the biggest challenges is how do they make the transition from employee into business owner? Because they require very different ways of thinking. Okay, T. Harv Eker, I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he wrote a book called The Millionaire Mind and he talked about the differences between business owners who, who do very well, become wealthy, become rich, and the masses who never really do that well with money. And I want to read some of these out because I, I think this is like, this sums it up perfectly. The poor and middle class, they believe that life happens to me. Okay, I can't control what's going on. People who do, do well financially, they believe, I create my life. That is like the most important thing. Whether you believe life happens to you or you are in control and you create your own circumstances. If you believe that the amount of money in your bank account is due to someone else, your job, the economy, you're never going to get wealthy. Okay, Until you accept absolute full responsibility for where you are financially, you will not get wealthy. So even when I didn't have a lot of money, because I'd spent it all on internet marketing, I still accepted full responsibility. Not in the beginning. In the very beginning, when I spent that $40,000, I went through like a period of maybe six months where I blamed the guy that I'd given that money to. I thought, that bastard, he never helps me. I sent him all that money. And I was blaming him for like a long time, but then I realized it's not him, it's all me. Okay, you have to accept that. The poor and middle class, they want to be rich. Everyone wants to be rich. That's why they buy lottery tickets. The people who do well, they are committed to being rich. There's a big, big difference. I come from a family of people who belong in the, on the left side. Okay? They, they think very much like that. Buy lottery tickets, etc., Okay, when you, the, the family that you were brought up in, I mean, that, that really conditions you and those of us who were brought up with those beliefs, we have to snap out of them, okay, and that can be a real challenge, but you have to examine the way that you think, your own thoughts, and look at, am I in the poor and middle class or am I thinking like someone who's going to do very well? They are poor receivers, okay? Have you ever noticed that some people, when you give them money or you give them something, they're, they're almost uncomfortable getting it. They're like, oh, no, that's too much. That's too much. Here, have some back. If you want to get wealthy, you've got to get very comfortable with receiving. Okay, You've got to get comfortable with accepting money. So if people want to pay you, you accept it. Zero guilt. Okay, But it's worth looking at these two different ways of thinking because this underlays everything. Choosing the right people to learn from. Here's the deal. When you get started in this industry, you know a certain number of things. Okay, There's a little area, a little circle of what you know. So you might know how to send an email. You might know how to set up a lead capture page. But then there's a bigger area. Okay, And you're aware of that. You're aware of those things, but you don't really know about them. You've heard of something called... CPA marketing, cost per action marketing, you've heard of that, or you've heard of SEO, 
search engine optimization, but you wouldn't know how to go and do it. So that's the area that you don't know about. But then there's this much, much bigger area of what you don't know you don't know. Okay? That's where a mentor comes into play. Okay? That's the area that you're not even aware you don't know about. Okay? Because a good mentor, they've been there before you. A good mentor, they've actually gone down the path that you're about to go down and know, they know that all the challenges that you're about to face, they've gone through them and they know how to solve them. Okay? So you want to learn from people who have that. Okay? They've actually done what you want to do. Now, let's begin. All right. So the first bit of cash that I want to give out, I want to ask you a question. And if you get this next thing, if you understand what I'm about to tell you, you fully understand it, then I'll consider, I mean, you can consider that whatever you invested to be here is a very, very good investment. If you get just this one lesson, this is the most important lesson in marketing, okay? What is, if, if we are going to sell online to the masses, what is the one thing that we need before anything else? And before you answer, let me, let me pose this to you a different way. Here's my challenge. I'm going to give you the best copywriters in the world, people who write sales letters, charge over $100,000 to write a single sales letter. They are that good. That, they are that good. And you have the five best in the world at your disposal. On top of that, I'll give you the top five phone sales closers. Okay, these people can sell ice to an Eskimo. They are that good on the phone. And you have those five people. So you have this team of 10 people at your disposal and pretty much anything else that you want. Yet if you give me just one thing and one thing only, I'm going to outsell you every time. $20. What is it? Put, put up your hand. hand. Hand first and then I'll pick you. No. No. Nope. Uh, you? No, nope. you, David? No. Nope. Almost. No, nope. no product. No. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 You're getting warmer. Getting warm. Give me one thing and I'll outsell you every time. Does anyone know? What is the one thing? What is the one thing that if I have, I'm going to outsell you every time, whatever you want to have? You can have the copywriters, the phone sales people. No, I'm, I'm looking for, come on, two words. A. Ah, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of opportunity. It is this. If you give me this one thing I'm going to outsell you every single time, it's a starving crowd. Okay? If I have a starving crowd who actually wants to buy what I'm selling, I will outsell you every time. It doesn't matter if you have the best copywriters or the best marketers at your disposal working for you 24-7. It doesn't matter. If I have this, I'm going to outsell you every time. Let, let's take this literally. I want you to imagine this scenario, okay? Tonight, we have a, a dinner, like a party. Do you guys all know about that? I'll tell you, from 7 to 11 p.m. It's a private mastermind dinner. And later on today, I'll tell you how you can get invited. Make sure you leave tonight free. Those of you who are local, make sure you stick around. But from 7 to 11 p.m. in a room nearby, I'll be paying for your dinner if you're invited, okay? Again, I'll tell you later on how you can get invited. So you're going to have a feast and you're going to eat a lot of good food. Let's pretend that after this session tonight, you've had this big, big meal and I bring you back in this room. I bring you back in this room, you all have a seat. And then in front of me, I have a table and on this table, there's the finest gourmet, gourmet food. I mean, there's lobster, whatever you can imagine, like really, really nice food. And I stand up here on stage and I start pitching you this food, telling you, hey, you should really buy this food. And I even offer it for half price, telling you it's really good food. 
you've all just eaten, you're all full, so I might get a few sales. Okay, I might get a few sales. Let's imagine another scenario, though. Let's imagine that next door, we have the exact same size crowd next door, about 100 people. And for this experiment, I've been a little bit cruel. I put a chain and lock on the door, and I kept them in there for five days without food. But I gave them water. Okay, I gave them water, but by this point, they are so hungry, they're starting to look at each other. Okay, they are literally starving. So I pitch you guys the lobster, and I get maybe whatever, like a few sales. But then I go next door, and, and I'm offering them McDonald's. But it's like, this is McDonald's after 171 days. That's a Happy Meal. It doesn't decompose. There's so many preservatives in it. Let's say this McDonald's is like almost 200 days old. It is disgusting. A homeless person would not want to touch this. And I have this big table of like 200-day-old McDonald's. I go in that room, and I stand up there on stage, and I give you guys a big like one-hour pitch for this finest gourmet food at half price. I go on that road, in that room and I, I practically say, I got McDonald's and I'm going to charge you 10 times what you would normally pay for it. Who wants it? I'm going to have a stampede in that room. They're going to rush at me so fast with their money because they want what I'm offering. Do you see the difference? I want you to understand this lesson. It's not about the product. Everyone thinks it's all about the product. It's about the audience. I could be selling garbage like 200-day-old McDonald's, but if I'm selling to the right audience, I'll outsell any other room who's selling to the wrong audience. It all begins with the market, the audience that you're selling to. That is where everything begins. And the way that, the way that like I've been in marketing for a little while, I and you guys have probably experienced this. When you tell people what you do and they say, you know, what are you doing? You say, oh, I'm in internet marketing. And they say, oh, yeah, like I've, I've, I want to learn how to do that. I mean, I've got this great idea for a product. If I could just find out how to market it, I'd be making a lot of money. That's like, that's how you recognize someone who doesn't, they don't quite get it. They've got a lot to learn. It's not about the product. It's all about the market, the audience. Again, it doesn't, the product is less important than you might think. It's all about the audience. The reason why I want you to get this is because if you're going to try and make money online and sell to the masses, that's where it all must begin. You could be the greatest internet marketer in the world, but if you're trying to sell to the wrong audience, you're not going to get any sales. So this is where it all begins. Has anyone seen this before? It's from Perry Marshall, a guy who's he's a very good marketer. Um, Basically, this triangle, the C stands for conversion, T for traffic, and E for economics. This is like the foundation of your business. Okay, conversion, traffic, economics. And in the middle, there's the 80-20 principle. You've all heard of that, right? 80-20? No? Yeah, all right. Most of you have. If you haven't, come and see me in the break. This is where it all begins. Okay, if you have traffic conversion and the right economics, you can make a lot of money online. And then those equations below there, they're mine. Or actually, I didn't come up with them, but that's, that's the foundation. Traffic plus conversion. Traffic is an audience. You guys all know what traffic is, right? Traffic is this room, that room of starving people after five days. That could also be a, a different traffic source. Traffic is the audience, the people who are clicking on your ads. Do not look at clicks as clicks. Look at them as people sitting behind computers all around the world. Thoughts, real lives going on in their minds. Okay, traffic plus conversions equals sales. Now, as long as our sales, our gross revenue, is greater than our expenses, what we pay to get that traffic, we're making money, we're profitable. So to get you guys here in this room costs money, right? To get those people in that room costs money. All traffic costs money. There's always a cost for traffic. But as long as what's coming in is greater than what's going out, you're making money. Okay? I know these are very basic things, but this really is this business. This is what it all boils down to. It all comes down to this. Traffic is really just eyeballs. It's getting people looking at your offer online. 
seeing your offer. That's all it is. They click your ad, they go to your lead capture page, they see your offer. But it's the right traffic. If there's one thing that annoys me, it doesn't, it doesn't really annoy me, but it, it just, when I see it, I, I realize that's a person who doesn't quite get it. Let's say you're on Facebook. Do you ever see people kind of bragging about how they get leads for like 15 cents or 20 cents? They talk about how they get free leads or free clicks. Have you ever seen that before? It, it kind of, it, it shows that they don't get it because they're talking about, hey, I'm getting really cheap clicks. Well, big deal. It's about where are those clicks coming from? Are those clicks from a room of people who just had a meal and don't want to buy or are they from a starving crowd? It's not about the fact that you get clicks for X dollars. It's about who's doing the clicking, okay? Who is the audience? That's where it all begins. So when it comes to buying traffic, there are some traffic sources where I will happily pay $5 for a click. For someone to click my ad, I'll pay $5 or I'll pay $10. And there are other traffic sources where I wouldn't want to pay five cents for that click because there are different people behind each click. Does that make sense? You're getting that? This is really important. Understand that money, money only comes from one place and that is people. Do not look at like, people look at internet marketing as if it's this thing where you sit down in front of your computer and your computer is going to magically spit out dollars, right? That's how they look at it. And I used to think about it like that too. I'd go and create my traffic campaigns and that's how I'd look at it. And I'd look at clicks as just being clicks. They're just little digits on the screen. But then I started thinking about them as being real people around the world, sitting there in their home, out there in their office, or on the couch in front of the TV, laptop in their lap, kids running around, the dog barking. I started thinking about them as real people. And how do I communi- communicate to those real people? How would I communicate to them if I was actually there in person? And I started to put that into my marketing. Okay, really important. It's funny, like when I, when I um, fly around to all these different places, like a few days ago I fly in from Mexico and I fly into LA. I love looking out the window of the plane and just looking down at like all the houses and all the cars. And I think, look at that. There's like tens of thousands, millions of people Okay, all of these people, and each of these people, they all have bank accounts, they all have wallets, they all have money. Now, where are they deciding to spend their money? How do I get my offer in front of these people? This is how you must think. Okay, money doesn't just come out of the computer, money is coming from these people. So when you communicate through your marketing, you must communicate as if you're communicating to a real person. It's really important. So traffic... I'm not going to go into too much detail about traffic, and I'll tell you why. Later on, you're going to be hearing from John Chow. You're going to hear a little bit from Terry Lamb. You're going to hear from Marlon Sanders tomorrow. Marlon's the guy who's been doing this since I was about nine years old. And they're going to be talking about list building, okay? So they're going to tell you everything you need to know about how to get leads. But traffic... It's really just, it's about getting your offer in front of the right audience. So whether it's banner ads, postcards, doing an ad in a magazine, a newspaper, having affiliates promote, that's what it's all about. Just getting your offer in front of the right people. Now, what is conversion? Conversion, okay, so we have traffic. Remember, traffic plus conversions equals sales. Just because you have people in front of your offer or coming to your website, it doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money. For example, do you guys remember that song, It's Friday, by Re- Rebecca Black? Remember that? Do you? Yeah. How, how many views did that get? It got like, like 100 million or something like that? It got like some ridiculous number. Now, so in other words, like, tens of millions, I think it might have been like over 100 million people, see this page on YouTube, see this video. That's a lot of people. Okay, that's a lot of people. Now, did that turn her into a billionaire? No. Did it make her into a millionaire? No. Maybe made her a little bit of money, but my point is just because you have a lot of traffic, 
it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make a lot of money. Don't look at traffic as being the answer because if you don't have the right conversion model, you can have all the traffic in the world. You can have a few hundred million people around the world in front of their computers looking at your website, but it's not going to turn into money. Okay? Conversion is that thing that separates a profitable business from one that's not. Conversion is the ability for you to put an offer on your website that persuades someone to pull out their wallet, take out their credit card, and send you some digital money, okay? And if you can master this one skill, you can have people from all over the planet sending you money. It's a cool thing. But that's what conversion is. So that's the second thing we need. Now, the third thing, economics. Here's the deal. At one point in my life, and this was actually fairly recently, I'd been looking at my bank account and I'd been building up this cash balance. And I was approaching, I'd been watching it from like late 2011 when I first started getting like decent results. And I'd been, all the money that was going in the merchant account, I just left it all in there. I did not touch it. I didn't go and spend it on cars or houses or anything. I just let it all accumulate. The only time I took money out of that account was for business expenses. And I watched it grow from 50000 to 100000 and above and beyond. And I remember it got to about $980,000 just sitting there. And I'm watching it and I'm thinking, can I get this to $1 million? Finally, it gets to $1 million. Okay? And I think, great. And I take a screenshot of it and I think, awesome. Finally, I reached that target. And then what happens, over the next maybe four, five months, we're doing several hundred thousand dollars per month in revenue. Four or five months later, I go back into that bank account, and I'd, I'd kind of been watching it, but I was, I was so focused on gross, on how much we're making per month in revenue, and I wasn't focusing on net, what, what's actually going into our bank, how much cash do we have on hand. Four or five months later, that number had barely changed. And I just like, I thought, what is going on here? All of this money is coming in, but it's all going out just as fast. This is insane. This is stupid. Okay? And here's why. When you start getting results, there's a big danger that you focus on gross, gross numbers. You see it all the time. Internet marketers are bragging about, hey, I make $100,000 per month. It's not about gross. It's about net. How much did you actually get to keep? The fact that you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars per month doesn't really mean anything if you're not getting to keep at least, you know, a portion of it. This is economics, okay? The economics of your business, it must be profitable. If it's not profitable, guess what? You can't keep on spending money to go and get a new audience. You can't scale up, okay? So this, this is really, really important. Who here has, have, have you guys like done a, a traffic campaign before? Have you ever, you've spent money on traffic before? Who spent money on traffic? Most of you, right? And you've had, I'm sure you've had the experience of you spent like $100, $200 and you got nothing back, right? Now, how long can you keep on doing that for? Not very long, okay? More money is going out than is coming in. That's the economics. That's the part you have to fix. Now, on the other hand, what if you spend $100 and you get back $200? How long can you keep on doing that for? Forever. That's, that's exactly what I did. When people ask me, like, what did you do to scale so quickly? That's what I did. That's all I did. At my first, like, $5,000 and $15,000 a month, rather than go and spend that money, I chose to put most of it back into the business to get more leads, more traffic. And I took that from 15 to 45 to 81K and so on. I just kept on putting it back into the business. It wasn't like, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't, it's not something that all of you couldn't do. Provided you had the right business model, so long as you can figure out how do I put $1 in and get $2 back, then you can do that. But that all begins with the conversion, okay, the business model. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Now, most of you, if you are getting started, here's what you need to understand. In the very beginning, cash is where you need to be focusing on, okay? You need to be bringing in cash. Why? 
you've got all of these expenses. You've got money going out on traffic. You start hiring people. You need cash on hand. My first few years in this business, I was constantly on the edge of having no money in the bank. I'd get like $500, $1,000, and then it would drain away, and I'd watch it dwindle down, and I'd, I'd have to wait for the next payment to come in, okay? But you need to be focusing on that, okay? Building up your cash reserves. Some of this, does, does, does this sound like general knowledge? It, it, maybe it does, but this is like, this is really what started getting me results, okay? Late 2011, I start making money and I start to think to myself, all right, I'm going to keep this cash on hand for the business, okay? And that became my focus. How do I grow this? How do I build this up? Most of the money that you will make in this business is not from new customers, okay? It's from repeat buyers. This was like, again, this is one of these epiphanies that I had. I realized that, hey, I can go and get new traffic and get new customers, but what is far, far easier is if I go to my existing customers and I sell them more products, I find additional ways to help them. Because by this point, now they trust me, now they know me, they've done one transaction with me that went well, now we have that relationship and now they're okay. It's much easier with getting that second sale than it is the first. The most expensive sale you will ever make is the first one, okay? This is what I do really well in my business. We get a customer, we don't just think, okay, now it's time to move on. We find additional ways to help them. So right now, we have customers in our database who are approaching about $100,000 spent with us, with my company. Think about that. How many of those would you need to start making a million dollars per year? Not that many, right? So if you can find a way to help people, help people at that level and keep on making repeat offers where they want to spend more and more with you, that's where your focus needs to be. A lot of people in internet marketing, they're so focused on going and getting new customers rather than maximizing their existing customer value. We're going to talk about that a little bit after the break, okay? Um, for example, and here's, here's the deal. When you're looking for a market, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, a good market to go after is one where as you serve them, as you sell them your product, and that product helps them, their purchasing power goes up. Where's, uh, where's David? David Fellini. Yeah, David. So about five weeks ago, David came to Fiji, and David invested. He's a Platinum member. Okay, Platinum is the highest level in MOBE. David invested in my apprentice program. That's $50,000. It's a one-year, one-on-one coaching program with me. Okay, $50,000. Do you know why he did that? I'll tell you why. In his first four or five weeks in MOBE, okay, joining our business, he made $12,000 100% residually. When I say residual, I mean like literally he did not have to do anything. And the reason is he had someone in his organization who was a producer and they started going and getting leads and sales and David got the residual commissions on that, okay? So I find a way to help him make money through our training. His purchasing power goes up. Now he feels more comfortable investing at the higher level. Do you see how that works? That's how you must do this industry. If you want to do well in this industry, you help people do well, you help them start getting results, you help them start making money, only then will they feel more comfortable investing in your higher level programs. But that's how we do it, okay? That's how you must do it. So choosing your market, this is like everything. Where do you start? Which market are you going to go in? You've got a lot of options here. You've got like the weight loss, fitness niche, multi-billion dollar niche, big, big niche. You've got the make money niche or the business opportunity niche, beauty, anti-aging, lots of different niches available. I mean, just watch the infomercials late at night. You'll see all of these different niches out there. What you're looking for, guys, when you're choosing this niche that you're going to go and 
dominate in with your online business, you want to look for a niche where there's already competition. Competition's good. It means people are making money. Okay? You want to look for competition. Don't shy away from competition. Part of the reason why I chose the internet marketing niche, there is a lot of competition, yes, and I look at that as a plus, but also when you are choosing a niche, it really, really, really helps if you understand your target market. Okay, if you understand what they're going through. Most of you right now, you are going through this right now, this, this whole internet marketing journey. You're trying to learn how to do internet marketing. You're going to seminars, you're buying products, you're sitting there at your computer each day. Some of you are getting results, some of you aren't, but you're going through the ups and downs. What you're doing right now, whether you realize it or not, is you are getting an education in your market, okay? Because you are your market. I'm very grateful that I spent my first two years really, really struggling in this niche because it taught me exactly who I'm marketing to. I know my prospect very well because I used to be my prospect, okay? Do you see how that works? Everything you're going through, don't look at it as a burden. Look at it as a gift. This is like the perfect market study that you're going through. So whatever you're experiencing right now, file it away because these, these things that you're going through, these will become your assets, your greatest assets in the future. Okay? Make sure you choose a niche that has the million-dollar potential. Okay? So there's little tiny niches that that don't quite support a million-dollar business. So make sure you have a big enough niche. The business opportunity, internet marketing niche, it's a massive niche. It's a multi-billion-dollar niche. Lots of money to be made here. Now, is this good? Are you, are you guys getting value from this before I go on? You, all right, good, good. So here's, here's the deal. In order to become wealthy, what we need to do, this is like the big kind of, epiphany I had. So I'm mowing lawns. I'm mowing lawns and I'm getting paid like $15 per hour. And I'd go and do my little job and I'd, you know, I'm picking weeds, doing whatever they wanted me to do, like, like picking up like dog shit, stuff like that. That's what I'd have to do. It wasn't the greatest job. And I was doing that for like three years, trading my time for money. And I didn't really like it, but I liked at the end, I'd get the $50 note for three hours usually and then I'd go to the bank. I liked that part, but I didn't like trading my time because I thought, it's only so many hours per day. There's a ceiling on what I'm doing. And I was doing this in, in like the most wealthy area in Perth. So I'm going into all of these big mansions, okay? These people making a lot of money, and I'm doing this manual labor, trading my time for money. And I saw it right there and then. I saw that, hey, what I'm doing right now, I'm just trading time for, away from my money. And it's never going to get me where I want to go. You have to figure out how to transcend, transcend that raw exchange of time for money. That's what a business can do for you. That's why we create systems. We create systems because they can work independently of us. They don't require us to be there trading our time away. All right, this is what I started doing in 2011. I started creating systems. So, for example, I think to myself, all right, I get someone on my list, on my email list. They opt in. Now they're on my list. I can write an email each day or I can write a 15-day follow-up sequence that will be sent out automatically. That's a system. Or I can set up a webinar. I can do a live webinar every Wednesday night or... I can create a recording that plays every Wednesday night, whether I'm there or not. So I started creating automated webinars. And I know that probably sounds technical to some of you. That sounds like, how do you do that? It's not. I mean, you, you can figure this stuff out. Like, don't, don't get caught up on the technical details. I'm just trying to tell you that focus on creating systems that work independently of you. Then what I started doing... At that point, I'm doing all the phone sales in my business. I start to think, well, this is great. I'm making okay money, but I'm working 14-hour days. How do I bring other people on board who can make calls for me and sell to my leads for me in exchange for a commission? And I start doing that. So now we have a phone team selling to our leads, 
without me having to be there. That's a system. Do you see what? Do you see the difference? A system versus a job. Okay, you become wealthy through creating systems. Next thing you need, when it comes to clicks to getting traffic, you, you've got two choices. You can go paid or you can go free. Now, free is not really free because it takes your time, okay? You have to trade away your time. So, for example, making videos and putting them on YouTube, that's a way you can get traffic, but it requires your time, okay, versus paid traffic. I'm going to recommend, even though I know John is going to be talking about how he gets a lot of free traffic, I personally, I go after paid traffic, and here's why. Here's the example I always give. Let's say, during the break, which will go on pretty soon, you want a Coke. Okay, so you go, you go down to the first floor and you find this vending machine and it's, it's kind of beaten up, it looks pretty old, and a can of Coke is $2. So you put in $2 and the vending machine gives you back $1.80. And you get a little bit annoyed, but you choose a cheaper drink. And you put in the dollar eighty for this cheaper drink. And again, this vending machine gives you back less than you put in. Now it gives you back a dollar sixty. Now you start getting annoyed and you hit the vending machine. And you're thinking, hey, what's going on? This vending machine is eating my money. How long can you keep on doing that for? How long? Yeah, not very long though. You're going to run out pretty quickly. You're going to run out, you know, within a few minutes. But... Let's say that you go upstairs and there's another vending machine and this one's brand new. And this time you put in $2. Instead of giving you a Coke, it gives you back $2.20. Okay? So you think, okay, well, I wanted a drink, but hey, that's okay, $2.20. So now you put in $2.20 to buy a bottle of Coke, a little bit more expensive. But now it gives you back $2.40. This vending machine is giving you back more than you're putting in. How long can you stand there in front of this vending machine? Forever. And you would, right? You would keep on putting money into it over and over and over again. If you can create a system online, which we will be talking about later on today, where it's able to take a dollar and turn it into a dollar twenty, and a dollar twenty and turn that into a dollar forty, and so on and so forth, that's how you scale up. That's how I did it. Okay, it started off again a few thousand dollars a month, and I kept on reinvesting that money, putting it back into the vending machine. That's the whole goal of this. That's why I like paid traffic. Your list. So guys, you need to build an audience in this industry. Dan Kennedy calls it your herd. Okay, your herd. And he doesn't mean that in a you know, derogatory way, but it's like you, you build your own herd, a group of, of followers, okay, a group of people who you influence. Okay, that's what your list does. Who here has a list, an email list, or you've started to build one, even if you only have a few leads? That's great. Okay, so starting to build your own list, very important. I started building mine in 2008, got my very first lead. I remember getting my very first lead from Google AdWords. I was right on the tail end of when that was still possible. And then getting to 100 leads, and that was like a big moment in history for me. I thought, wow. 100 leads, but it, it all starts there. Wherever you are right now, start building that list and email them every single day. Email them every single day, okay? And don't, some people think, well, isn't that too much? Trust me, just do it every single day, okay? Make offers to them. Sell to them, but do it in a way where it's entertaining, where it's interesting, where they enjoy getting your emails. Keep it lively. You've got to have personality in your marketing. And the good news is you don't have to have a good personality. Okay, you don't. You need to, what you're really trying to do, the best marketers polarize their audience. The best marketers will piss off a lot of people, like 95% of the people, but there will be 5% who love them, okay, who will travel around the world to just be with them. That's what you want to do, okay? You want to polarize your audience. You're going to be hearing from Terry Lamb after lunch. Now, if you're on Terry's list, his emails are pretty edgy, okay? And he does that. Who, who here is here because of Terry? 
Yeah, so you guys get his emails, right? And they're pretty, like, they can be pretty. I'm on his list too. That's good. That's good marketing, all right? He's saying, look, you need to be at the Home Business Summit. If you're not here, get off my list. Like, it's kind of like that kind of attitude. And it, and it works, right? It's obviously working for him. That's what you want to do. You, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that you need to be rude to your list or anything like that, but I'm saying don't be in the middle. Be one of the extremes, okay? You're not trying to appeal to everyone. If you try and appeal to everyone, you will go broke, okay? What you're trying to do is you're trying to appeal to maybe a small portion of that audience, okay? And they're really going to resonate with your message. Those are the people who are going to buy from you. Personal time management and focus, okay? This is what separates someone who does well from someone who doesn't in this industry. All of you are going to get the exact same knowledge over this weekend. Now, you can go home, and you will go home, and you'll start perhaps implementing. I hope you implement. Yet there will be people in this room who become much more successful than others. Why? Is it because of intelligence? Maybe to some degree, but not as much as you might think. It's going to be more due to their own time management and their own focus. What do they spend their time doing? This is what really changed everything for me. My first two years, I spent my time doing all the wrong things. I spent my time constantly responding to other people's marketing. So I'd get like 50 emails a day, I'd be watching the next launch after launch and responding to their marketing. My attention was constantly jumping from ad, click here, click here, click here, and I would do that for hours and hours and hours on end, okay? I'd be very busy, but I wouldn't be productive. I wasn't getting much done. Who can relate to that? Yeah, you, you can feel that, right? You sit down in front of your computer and you go through that. What you need to do in the very beginning, here's what is essential. That first sale, you need to get that as fast as you can. Okay, you need to get that sale as soon as you can. Here's why. Number one. For the cash, obviously, the resources, you need resources to build your business. But number two, it's psychological. What happens is, if you go too long without getting results in this industry, you start to doubt yourself. And that's what I did. You start to doubt yourself and you start to accept that this is just the natural state of affairs. I'm never going to figure this out. Okay? And it's dangerous. Okay? It's dangerous. When you get that first sale, though, and you see, hey, this is actually real, this actually works, it will snap you out of that. That's why it's so important that everything you do when you get home, your primary goal is, I'm not going to try and make a million dollars. I'm just going to try and get my first sale. I'm going to promote this product as an affiliate. I'm just going to try and get one sale. That's all you focus on. Just focus on that one thing. Focus on making that very first sale. That's it. So what you should and shouldn't be doing. Here's, here's the difference between someone who does well in this industry and someone who doesn't. It's where you're spending your time, okay? So if you spend your time doing activities that actually bring in revenue into your business, you're going to do well. For example, writing an email to your list and promoting a product. That's going to bring in the revenue, okay? That's going to get you sales. If you do it enough and you do it to the right audience. Putting on a webinar. Okay, some of you haven't done a webinar before. For some of you, you're thinking, what's a webinar? And it might think like a long way off, okay? But you've, you've got to be challenging yourself, okay? For me, at one point, doing a webinar was a big, scary thing too, okay? But you doing a webinar and getting people on a webinar and selling to them and telling them you should get this program, that's a revenue-producing activity. That is time well spent. Getting new traffic... Talking on the phone one-on-one -on -one to a prospect and actually selling. That's a revenue-producing activity. This is where your focus needs to be in your business. What doesn't bring in revenue is you studying course after course after course, thinking that you must know everything before you go and take action. That will keep you broke, okay? Doing admin, bookkeeping. Do you know I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay taxes for about three years when I started this business? Not on purpose, but because 
I was so focused on building the business that I thought, I'll do all the book work later. And I wasn't bringing in that much money anyway. I thought, well, what taxes? But only recently did we get up to date. But my point is, your focus needs to be in the right areas. The 80-20 principle, most of what you do, here's the thing, guys. If you were to take a, a notepad around with you during the day and write down what you're doing every 10 minutes, and you actually, if you actually go home and do this, write down what you're doing every 10 minutes, and then look at that at the end of each day, you will find that a lot of what you did, it, it's, it's just like busy work. It's busy work, but it's not productive work. In your business, you are either swimming forwards or you're treading water, okay? Now, when you're treading water, if you've ever been in the ocean and you're, or, or a pool and you're treading water, you're moving, right? You feel busy, but you're actually going nowhere. That's what checking email, checking Facebook, that's what that is. That's treading water. Now, you can do that for a little while, but if you keep on doing that, sooner or later, you will drown. You will get that tire that you will drown, okay? And that is equivalent to people coming into this industry three months later, dropping out, okay? They drown. They spend all their time treading water. You need to be swimming forwards. Swimming forwards is focusing on activities that actually bring in the revenue, okay? It's not doing the trivial many, it's doing the vital few. The vital few, there's few activities that actually move you forwards in your business. And here's the deal, guys. When it comes to startups, and make no mistake about it, this is a startup, okay? What you're about to embark upon, this is your startup. It's going to be very, very messy. It's going to be very messy, and this, this is what, like, people don't get. When I, when I, like, started getting results in 2011, I, you guys, I asked you before, you all know Jonathan Budd, right? I had promoted for Jonathan, and we started to become friends, okay? Um, and he, again, he had made millions of dollars, and here I was, I'd only just started getting half-decent results. And I started working with him to help him in his own business and doing my business on the side. So I saw the inside of his business. This is a guy who was doing millions of dollars. And I saw that it was chaos. It was very, very messy. And that was like an eye-opening moment. I saw, wow, this is what it's like. This is what success looks like. I've been afraid of this for so long. I've been thinking that I need to get everything. I need to know everything before I go and execute. But when I saw what he was doing, I, I saw this is just a guy who just executes and he makes a ton of mistakes along the way, but he's just constantly in action mode. And I started applying that to my own business. And those people who are in my business today or working behind the scenes, and there's a few of you here, you will, you will attest to this. You will know it's very, very messy. So what you see, you know, when you get the emails and so on, it might look like it's fairly organized, but behind the scenes, it's very messy. You have to get used to that. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of it being messy. Accept it. That's just how it's going to be. If you want to get to a million dollars in this industry, it's going to be messy. You're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. I love this little line. As entrepreneurs, we're like literally building the plane as we fly it. That's how it, that's how it feels at times. Okay, We're just like moments away from crashing. And you've got to embrace that. I'm not saying you need to be reckless. But that feeling of not having all the answers, embrace it, okay? When you embrace it, that's when you start getting momentum in your business. That's when you start moving forwards. At each stage that you go through, as you build this up, and I can see a few of you, I know we're going to take a break in about five minutes, guys. Um, at each stage as you build this up, it's different, okay? In the very beginning, when, you, when you're getting to your first like $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, it's going to be chaos, okay? It's going to be chaos. It's going to be very messy. Don't be afraid of that. As you build it up, you're going to start to bring people on board to help you out, and you're going to start to have more structure in place. And then it goes to rapid growth and then continu continuous growth, and it gets bigger and bigger. But in the very beginning, the startup environment, it is like that. It's chaos, it's messy, and... The thing is, guys, most of us, we're, we're brought up through the education system where we are taught 
that you go and study books first. You go and study books, you do the test. You go and acquire the knowledge first before you go and do. That's why I struggled for my first two years. I was in my fourth year at university. I mean, I, I'd been through like the last decade, I'd been in the education system and I'd been trained that that's what you do. You study, you get all the answers before you even think about doing. And I tried applying that to internet marketing, it doesn't work. And then I switched my approach and I thought, okay, how about if I just go and do and I figure it out along, along the way and I make a ton of mistakes and it's very messy, but that's what I'm going to try. And that's when things started to change. Your focus in the very beginning, everything you do must be about making sales. And I, I know I probably sound like a broken record here just telling you this over and over, but this is like, this is truly like, this must permeate everything you do. Everything you do in the beginning must be about how do I sell more products. Look at people like Richard Branson, for example. I mean, he's always selling. He's always in selling mode. Donald Trump, he's always selling. Like these entrepreneurs, they are always selling. That's what you must learn to do. Okay, this must become a part of what you do. Always be in promotion mode. Now, a big question I get, and a few people asked me this last night, how much time do you need to put into this? How much time do you need to be dedicating to your business? And my answer is that it really depends. It's possible for you to get to 10,000, 50,000 a month working a few hours per day if you are working on the right things. Okay, it's possible. But if you want to take this to millions and millions and millions of dollars per year, this will require an absolute dedication from you, okay? And some people look at that and they think, well, I don't want to do that. That looks like a lot of work. And here's, here's the deal. Here's what I learned. If you look at this as work, then you're going to have a hard time getting results. You cannot look at this as work. You must learn to love this. I mean, like for me, doing marketing... It's always on my mind. My business is like always on my mind. It's like, the, it's like one of the most important things in my life. And if you want those kind of results, that's how you must think about your business. You must learn to love it, okay? Richard Branson, I don't think of work as work and play as play. It's all living. Like there's no clear lines. It's not nine to five anymore. When I look at my business, like I'm always in that mode what's going on in the business, okay? I'm always thinking about it. This is how you must learn to think and relate to your own business. Now, I, I don't know if you guys are interested in this, but if, if you are wondering, like, what, what do you do in a typical day to do the kind of numbers that you're doing? What, what's your typical day look like? I want to just tell you this. And, and are you guys interested in this or do you want me to skip over it? You wanna, all right, all right. So this is like the earliest I've been up in about five weeks. I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning and it, it was very painful. <laughs> Normally, I wake up at like 11 a.m. And that's when I start my day because I, I sleep late. But I wake up and I go to the office. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. I have an office. It's only five minutes away. But I go to the office. First thing I do, I go and get my coffee. I need my coffee and I sip it all throughout the day. I have to have that coffee. It's like a habit. And I, the first thing I do, I sit down in front of my computer and I check my emails, I check my Facebook. This is not what most time management people tell you to do, but that's what I do. And I check my numbers. I want to know what were our sales overnight. Now, you need to do that too. You need to be checking your numbers. You might think, well, what if I don't have any numbers to check? You need to still start doing it. That's how you're going to train your mind to focus on, are we moving forward? Are we bringing in revenue? Okay, but that's what I do. And I'll talk to the, the key people on my team. I'll email my list. I'm always thinking about that. The most valuable asset that you have in this business is the relationship with your list. I can't tell you the number of times when I hear people tell me, oh, Matt, I, I brought some leads from you, okay, and I got like 500, 1,000 leads on my list, and then I ask them, have you been emailing them? And they say, well, not really. And I say, well, how long has it been? And they say, well, it's actually been about five weeks. 
should I start emailing? And, and by that point, I'm like, well, it's, that list is pretty much dead. Your list is an organic thing, okay? And the relationship between you and your list, is, it, it is organic. It's either improving or it's degrading. It's never static. And you must keep it alive. That's why I say you must email your list every day. At least, like, do it at least four times, five times per week in this niche. Keep it alive. Because that relationship, if you don't email them, they'll start to forget who you are. That relationship will be damaged. Okay? That relationship is money. That's everything. Okay? So, I'll email my list. That's very important to me. I will create new products, create new offers. That's a revenue-producing activity. See, this is something I do these days. I didn't used to do this four years ago or two years ago because I didn't know any better. I'm not saying that you guys need to go and do this. I'm not saying you need to go and create products. What I am saying, though, is that your priority when you sit down to work each day must be what's going to move the business forward, what's going to bring in revenue, okay, what's going to move us forward. Improving our current sales funnels, improving the conversion model, very, very important, okay? Now, around 3 or 4 p.m., I'll go and get lunch, okay? I'll, you know, whatever I do, I, I go to Subway, whatever, and I eat at my desk, and I'll watch, like, I'll watch YouTube, but it'll be something about this business, okay? It won't just be, sometimes it is, sometimes it's just time-wasting stuff, but that's what I do. And then at 6.30, then I'll work to 6.30 p.m., I go home, go for my run, have dinner, and then I'm back in the office, and I'll work through to 11 or 12, Okay, most of you probably wouldn't want this life. It's and people like people would maybe want the the money, but they wouldn't want the life. Okay, here's here's the thing though. Like I tell you this because this this is what I do. I I love what I do. I love internet marketing. I love having this like my daily routine, seven days a week, even Sundays. This is what I want to do, all right? I love doing the business. You must learn to really love your business. You must become that passionate about it that you're always thinking about it. So I get home, I'll usually, I don't know, I'll watch a movie or something like that, but I always have my laptop open and I'm always thinking about the business. That's a typical day in my life. Now, you don't have to be putting in those kind of hours, okay? You don't have to at all. And over this weekend, I'm going to show you a few ways where you can still get the results you want, whether, whether it's 10000 20000 a month, whatever you're aiming for, without having to, you know, live this kind of life where you're putting in 12 hours per day. But I just show you this because if you want to take this all the way to millions and millions of dollars per year, this is the kind of dedication that you must be willing to put in. Not too many people really tell you that because it's not something people like to hear, but that's the truth. Your environment. A key turning point for me around that time of late 2011 was when I decided I need to start taking this business a little bit more seriously. I need to get out of my bedroom because up until that point I'm working out of my bedroom. I have a desk in the corner and I need to get a real office and when I go to work each day I, I need to treat my business like, I don't like to say it, but like a job almost. Where I, where I actually have a time when I get into the office and I sit down and I get stuff done. So I rented an office, even when I could barely afford it. And it scared me to sign the lease for one year because this was a time when there wasn't much money coming in. But I knew, hey, something's got to change here. This isn't working. So I go and I rent an office and that was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I still rent an office. It's five minutes away from where I live. I drive to the office every day. It costs me like $1,000 a month extra, okay? $12,000 a year. Maybe that seems like a lot to you, maybe not, but it, it comes back many times over in ROI, okay? Because it's a better environment. You sit down and now you're ready to produce. When you try and run your, your online business from your laptop in front of the TV, you're not really working, right? You're like, you know, you're checking email. That's, that's not really getting stuff done. So the environment that you're producing in has a big impact on what you get done. This other principle, guys, as you're scaling this business, and we're, we're going to have a break in about two minutes, but as you're scaling your business, I want you to, to learn this lesson early on because no one really told me this and it's got me into trouble a few times. One is the most dangerous 
number in business. You don't ever want to become dependent on one thing. For example, if you become dependent on one traffic source and that traffic source dries up, that's dangerous. If you have one merchant account where you're accepting the money and that merchant account gets shut down, as they often do for some reason, there goes your business. Um, a little while ago, our, our CRM, like where we manage all of our customers, that pretty much got shut down. Hundreds of thousands of dollars that cost me. Okay? So don't ever become dependent on one thing. Always be thinking, what's my backup plan here? Okay, and finally, before we go to the break, I want you to enjoy this journey that you're, you're about to embark upon. I mean, entrepreneurship and this, this struggle that we go through to build this business, it's not a, a burden, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to do what we do. We live in a time, if you look at the, the history of humankind, we are very lucky to be living at this time with the internet. We have... We can reach people all around the world with our marketing. It's incredible. So we're very lucky. And look at this. This is fun. Look at this journey as something that it's something to, to enjoy. Don't look at this as a struggle.